So talk a little bit about that uh, album that was supposed to come out. Uh, you said it kept getting pushed back. At what point do you, you know, say enough's enough and what eventually happened to that deal? Um, eventually, Tommy Boy pushed my album back so many times that I went in and had a conversation with Monica Lynch and um, it wasn't cute. You know, back then we kind of walked up in the office and it was like, yo, what's, what's going on? And, you know, I was quite the thug back then. So I definitely had some words with Monica and I was like, if y'all not gonna release my album, let me go, you know? And so eventually I was able to get cut from the label. Were you able to take your masters with you? I was not able to take my masters with me, but they did let me out of my contract with them. And I didn't end up owing any money or anything like that, but they kept my masters. And at this point in my life, at this point in my career, I believe that I should have the right to go after my masters. I think it's something like 30 years or whatever. But um, like I said, Tommy Boy on the sneak, bought out Warlock's whole catalog. They took over Warlock Records at some point in one of these decades. And then that gave them the rights to Wild Thing, which they never had the rights to. And so I was planning to go after my, my masters and everything for that, but they ended up acquiring it. So I now still have to, I'm doing some checking on what, what I actually can own and cannot own, or what I can get and get back. Right. Uh, after the Tommy Boyd deal around um, 93, 94, I imagine, uh, where did LaShawn find herself? 93, 94, let's see. So I was, I was running around with, again, Flavor Unit, um, doing stuff with other artists, Apache, Coolio, Mooney, um, and who else? De La Soul, I did Biddy's in the BK Lounge with De La. I was real close to them as well. So I was just running around, you know, Jungle Brothers, um, The Beat Nuts, and Common, um, just running around with different people, doing different things, being in the studio, Q-tip, <laughs> it's just like, that was my whole click right there. So we was always in the studio doing stuff. It wasn't like now where everything has to be done and you know, it's all legal and I get this and you get that and da da da, da. We, we didn't do that. We kind of just hung out in each other's sessions a lot. And it was like, yo, you should jump on this type of thing. So right. yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how Biddy's in a BK lounge <laughs> happens. What do you remember most about that session? Classic uh, off of De La Soul's Dead. De La Soul. Oh, um, like I said, it just was always situations where we were in each other's sessions. Again, another Tommy Boy group, and we were just always in each other's sessions, hanging out like, yo, where you at? We, we up here, we up there, or whatever. Okay, I'm coming down, I'll be there in a few, you know, whatever. Um, and just hang out. And next thing you know, it's like, oh, I need you to do this hook. So there's probably songs that I'm on that I don't even remember that I was on. <laughs> now, after the Tommy Boy deal, does this kind of leave a, a bad taste in your mouth? Or are you uh, pursuing a deal after that one? Um, I was still trying to pursue a new deal. I was shopping my, myself at that point. I didn't have any rights to any of the songs that I had done. So I would have had to record a whole new album. Um, but then I became pregnant shortly after that. So um, my, I got pregnant with my son and everything just kind of slowed down for me after that. And it was more about being a mom than anything else. Gotcha. Around 96, LL was preparing for album. Uh, take us back to the phone call and how LaShawn jumped on doing it. Um, Chris Lighty, uh, rest his soul. Chris Lighty, he was the everything man of Violator. 
Violeta Records, Violeta Management, Violeta Entertainment, you name it. That was Chris Lighty. Um, and he and I were really good friends. And um, he called me up. I was at my apartment in Brooklyn. And he called me up and he's like, yo, we are in the studio. I'm in the studio with L. He had been working with L. And he said that they wanted to do um, a version of my song. And they wanted it they were gonna be using the same beat. And this one was produced by um, Rashad and we were gonna be using the same beat, but they wanted my lyrics from my song, doing it and doing it and doing it well. They wanted that to be the hook. So it was like, okay. Um, he's like, yes, I'm gonna send a car for you. I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right, Chris. And then next thing you know, I'm in the studio with Elle and like, you know, we're in there just going over lyrics and going back and forth. And he had things written down that he wanted to hear me say, uh, say, you know, like say this, what about this? How would you say this? And, you know, it was just going back and forth. And then finally, once we got to that point um, where I don't think we recorded that night, I'm pretty sure I came back and then we recorded it because I needed time to like, you know, get comfortable with the lyrics and all of that stuff. So then when we went back in to record, like I said, it was, that's it. Went in, I did my verse and it was a wrap after that. Wow. What do you remember most about that song uh, when the radio got a hold of it and how did life change for LaShawn? Um, what do I, what I remember most about that song? Yeah, once it once it hit the radio waves and took off. Um, wow, it blew up. Um, it blew up in a big way. I was happy and I was excited, but at the same time, I was now pregnant with my daughter. <laughs> so it was bad timing on my part. Uh, so I ended up not being in the video um, because of you know being full on prego. Um, but when the song first came out, like it was, it was a big deal for me. However, I never really got the recognition that I should have gotten for that song. Right. What was the discussions about, um, you know, the recognition around that time? What were they saying as far as why they didn't give you the proper credit? I don't know why. Again, it, it was a different time. We didn't have social media. So the most I saw about myself was in the tabloids, like the Inquirer, like, you know, she's pregnant and, um, you know, she is not in the video. And like, cause, because, because it became a legal thing between Elle and I. Um, so it was mostly like tabloids. It wasn't people on Instagram, saying what they wanted to say. It wasn't nothing like that. It was a completely different time. So if there was a whole lot of discussion going on, I was not privy to those discussions.